Welcome to session three of week seven in virology part one. This week we're talking about DNA replication. And in this session, I'd like to talk about how DNA can be primed via DNA or a protein. In the previous sessions, we talked about DNA synthesis primed by a short RNA fragment. Today, we're going to use either DNA itself or a protein as the primer. And this is important because, as you know, DNA synthesis is always primer dependent. Let's first look at the parvoviruses. These are viruses with single-stranded DNA genomes. There are about four to 6,000 base pairs in length. Here's the schematic of the genome at the top here. <clears throat> and this genome is largely single-stranded. As you can see, it encodes uh, just two open reading frames, two proteins. The ends of this genome are quite unusual. They consist of terminal repeats, that is, the sequence is the same at each end. It's repeated at the genome termini. And not only is it repeated, but it has unusual properties that allows it to form this T structure at either end. And the reason why it can form uh, this kind of a T structure is because the sequences in these end regions, these termini, have inverted complementarities, so they can base pair with each other. So you can see here is the sequence of this T structure here at the left end of the genome. And you can see there's a free 3' hydroxyl here, which is the end of the 3' end of the viral DNA. And this can base pair, the blue part shows you where it can base pair with uh, another region of the viral genome not too far away from it. So that's one region of double-stranded DNA made by this sort of internal base pairing. Uh, and then at the very left here, you can see another kind of double-stranded DNA structure, again, made by uh, base pairing within the viral DNA. So that's why there is a T structure at either end, because you have this internal uh, complementarity. This turns out to be the primer for viral DNA synthesis. When you think about it, it's perfect. It's a three prime hydroxyl and there is DNA upstream. Actually, all you need is a three prime hydroxyl and the way that's provided, of course, is by a primer. In this case, it's the viral DNA folding back on itself. So the polymerase is going to initiate replication right here and start adding bases complementary uh, to the template, which is the single stranded DNA. So let's see how that works. So we start at the upper left, which is a linear version of the parvovirus genome. Now it's shown here as a single line. There's no secondary structure drawn yet because I want to show you uh, these terminal repeats. So remember, these are the repeated sequences at each end of the genome. What I didn't tell you is that they're inverted and they're complementary. So that's why it's ITR, inverted terminal repeat. Here, the repeat is just diagrammed in a schematic way as A, B, C, A prime, D. At the other end, it's repeated, but it's inverted. A prime, B prime, C prime, A, D prime. The prime means the complement of the other. So here, the A is the complement of A prime. So these would base pair if they were near each other. And that's shown here. So this genome can form this on a bottle-like structure, if you will, where the two inverted terminal repeats hybridize. So this could be an A or a T, a G, C, A, T, T, A, C, G. The two ends are not only inverted and repeated, but they're complementary, so they can base pair. So this genome can adopt a variety of interesting structures via these inverted terminal complementary repeats. They can form this bottle, but this is not very useful for viral DNA synthesis because the, there is a free three prime end, but there's no template to copy. Uh, the two possible structures that are useful for replicating DNA are either this one on the right, so here's a three prime hydroxyl from this T structure that could be a primer for DNA synthesis. But let's make it simple to look at and consider this structure on the left, where each end of the genome has uh, base paired to form a T-like structure separately. 
So the polymerase will take this 3' prime hydroxyl as a priming site. And this, of course, is the cellular polymerase, and it recognizes this uh, as a DNA that can be copied. Now, interestingly, this doesn't require T antigen, as does SV40. This is replicated by the cellular polymerase as it is. Uh, and so the polymerase elongates on this 3' prime end and makes a copy of the template, which is in blue. And the product is in red here. The polymerase extends all the way to the end. And we've melted out the T structure at the right-hand end, so you can see how the polymerase makes a copy all the way to the end of the genome RNA. Okay, now, the problem here, of course, is that even though we have a primer, we're still missing some sequences in the genome. So you can see the red doesn't cover the entire left-hand part of the genome. So how do we do that? Well, remember I told you that uh, every DNA virus needs at least one protein to be made, one viral protein to be made in order to replicate its genome. And for parvoviruses, that protein is called Rep78-68. What this protein does is it nicks the DNA, in this case this double-stranded DNA, between the A' prime and the D segments and makes a free end, a free three prime end. That serves as a primer for the DNA polymerase. The DNA polymerase then proceeds to copy this strand and completes the copying of the genome. Now we have a full-length, double-stranded copy of the viral DNA. Uh, this version up here was not. It was missing left-hand sequences because of the folding of the primer. But now because of the NIC, so this NIC is really important, the NIC allows the polymerase to copy the left hand of the genome. So there's no end problem because of the nicking. That gets rid of the end problem. It gives you a primer to fill in the left-hand missing sequences. So now we have a double-stranded product. What happens next is the polymerase takes these ends on the left, can fold into their interesting T structures. The polymerase can initiate on this 3' prime hydroxyl and start to copy this strand again. Uh, this is strand displacement now. You can see uh, the synthesis of one strand is displacing that of the other. You now have a displaced uh, strand, this this one here in number seven, which is basically another piece of genomic DNA. You've now replicated uh, the genome. And now we have a new double-stranded product, which can go through the same nicking and extension reactions as before. So these simply go through this series over and over to make more genomic DNA. So this is continuous replication. You don't need any discontinuous replication. It's all continuous 5 to 3 prime in one direction. Uh, we don't need polymerase alpha to make primers. We don't need a primase. It uses the inverted terminal repeat uh, right here to self-prime. All it needs is polymerase delta, uh, RFC, and PCNA to make that sliding clamp. And this Rep78 is 68 is an incredibly important viral protein, right? It makes the NIC that allows you to finish copying the genome and it has a variety of activities that are involved in that. And there, again, there is no replication fork in the replication of this genome. It's all strand displacement. So that's a neat solution uh, to the primer, the requirement for a primer. And uh, by doing that, there is no uh, end problem. Pretty neat. So that was priming with an unusual structure in the DNA. Let's look at another solution to getting a primer, and this is done in adenovirus-infected cells, and this is to use a protein. Let's first look at the genome of adenovirus. Now, this is these are viruses that are uh, slightly bigger, substantially bigger than the parvoviruses we've just looked at. These are double-stranded DNA genomes, okay? So they are double-stranded, two strands of DNA, different from the parvos. And uh, they have free 5' prime and 3' prime ends. They're linear, double-stranded DNA molecules. There is an origin of replication at each end. Now let's go back and point out that the origin of parvovirus replication would be right here, this 3' prime hydroxyl. And the region uh, in that area is the origin of replication for that virus. Adenovirus has two origins of replication, one at the left end, 
and one at the right hand. You can see they're labeled here ORI. And interestingly, there is a protein linked to the five prime end of each strand. It's the little orange ball here. Here's one linked uh, to the bottom strand, five prime end, and here is one linked to the top strand, the five prime end. The replication of this genome is by strand displacement, as you will see. Of course, it is semi-conservative, as for all the DNA replication that we're talking about. So let's see how this works, protein priming. Let's start at the upper left here. Uh, we have an, an enlarged view of the left end of the viral genome. Remember, it's a double-stranded viral DNA. Uh, and at the very left end, we have, of course, a 3' prime hydroxyl uh, at, on the bottom strand. This virus, uh, adenovirus, encodes its own DNA polymerase. And that DNA polymerase is shown here as a, a purple sphere. And this DNA polymerase binds to a, a second viral protein called PTP, which stands for pre terminal protein. Uh, this is the a, a precursor version, if you will, of the protein that ends up being linked uh, to the five prime ends of the viral RNA. The DNA polymerase binds PTP, and it also binds the three prime end of the genome, the origin of replication. And then what it does is the polymerase adds a C residue, one of the four bases, C, from a precursor of CTP. It adds it to a serine. It covalently links it to a serine of the preterminal protein. This complex then serves as a primer for viral DNA synthesis. So remember, the function of a primer is simply to give you a three prime end on which to add more bases. And that three prime end is typically provided by another base. In this case, there is a single base that supplies the three prime hydroxyl. It's a C. It happens to be complementary to the first base at the three prime end of the of this strand of the DNA. And it's linked to this protein to which the polymerase is attached, and the whole complex sits at the three prime end of the genome. So that's the primer for viral DNA synthesis. A protein stuck on the polymerase, the polymerase then binds to the three prime end of the DNA. That C then serves as the primer for new DNA synthesis. So the next base that's going to be added by this polymerase would be an A, complementary to this T, and it'll be linked, covalently linked by a phosphodiester bond to this C. So the polymerase is shown in here in this diagram now, starting to move along the template strand. This is displacement synthesis. It's displacing uh, the blue strand here. It's moving down the genome. It's making a, comple a, a complementary strand, which is shown in red here. So now the pre-terminal protein is left behind because it is linked covalently to that first base, the C, and the polymerase is now making new DNA. And as it moves down the viral template, it displaces the other strand. That's called the displaced single-strand template DNA. And as that single strand is displaced, it binds to a, another viral protein called the DNA binding protein, or DBP. That's the yellow sphere shown here. And these bind along the length of the displaced strand, and they keep it single-stranded. They keep it from uh, hybridizing to form uh, a double-stranded DNA. And eventually, the polymerase makes a complete copy of the template strand. Uh, that is shown here. It's now a double-stranded product. So you have the original light blue strand. You have the newly synthesized red strand, which, of course, is linked to a primer, and the blue strand has a primer from the previous round of synthesis. So this is a new genome. Uh, the, the terminal protein is then uh, processed. The preterminal protein is then processed by a protease to give you the final terminal protein, and that's shown in orange here on the genome. So the preterminal protein is uh, pinkish, and the terminal protein is orange. The other strand, what happens to that? The one single displaced template strand 
uh, coated with DNA binding protein. That's shown here. Now, the ends of adenovirus DNA happen also to be inverted terminal repeats like the ends of parvovirus DNA genomes. And so they can hybridize, as you can see here. They're complementary. So they, find, they form this structure, a kind of a panhandle structure, I guess, if you will. Here's the five prime end of the viral DNA uh, bound to terminal protein. The rest of the genome is coated with single-stranded DNA binding protein. Uh, and then you have more base pairing. And what do you think? That can serve as a primer for DNA synthesis. So the polymerase will uh, come on to the three prime end right here. This structure, this double stranded structure, looks very much like one end, one origin of viral DNA. And in fact, it is an origin of DNA synthesis. It's the other end right here. And the polymerase comes on with another molecule of PTP linked to C and initiates uh, replication at the three prime end. So here the protein is linked to the five prime end. So that tells you that this is the three prime end. This will serve as a template now for synthesis of DNA. And that's what's happening uh, in this picture. The um, polymerase has initiated synthesis with preterminal protein right down here, uh, and it is making a complementary strand. And in so doing, it's making it double-stranded and pushing off uh, the single-stranded DNA binding protein. So the synthesis initiates right here at the three prime end and goes in this direction, copies in a three to five prime direction and synthesizes in a five to three prime direction. So that gives you another double-stranded uh, product. And that's why, of course, it's semi-conservative because both strands are replicated. And the key here, of course, is a protein primer that uh, not only serves as a three prime hydroxyl for the addition of new bases, but doesn't give you any empty sequence at the ends. There's no end problem with this virus either by use of this protein primer because the primer is right here at the last base of the DNA genome. Nothing has to be removed. No RNA primer has to be removed. So that's a really cool solution to priming and the end problem. This is just a look at this adenoviral single-stranded DNA binding protein and how it works as the polymerase is synthesizing new DNA. That's shown in red on the blue template. The DNA moves along, and here we have strand displacement. You are now denaturing the double-stranded DNA, and you have a single strand being displaced. In order to keep that single-stranded, it is bound up by uh, sequential copies of this single-stranded DNA binding protein. And that keeps the genome single-stranded until such time as this synthesis is incomplete, and then you can form the panhandle structure and, and go through another round of copying.